What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday, and my battery has been fully charged. I am back in service 100%. I need these little events like TFCon or whatever to kind of interact with people to kind of put me back in the races because it's funny, a lot of times, I remember we're going to get to all of it. You know what we're getting to. You know what we're getting to. Where's the comment? Of course it's coming. It's coming. I just wanted to make sure that we really thought about this one all the way through before we had the conversation. So we'll get there. But you go through all this stuff and you create the content and you interact with people and you kind of get a skewed view of things. And then when you meet people in person, you it, it puts things in perspective for you. So I needed this weekend, I really did, to kind of put me back into perspective. So I feel better, even though I'm sick, I feel better, I feel good, I'm ready to get back into the sh Shout out to everybody that came by the table. Shout out to everybody that walked away with something. Shout out to everybody that just wanted to shake my hand and, and say thank you or, or have a brief conversation. It is appreciated. Right here. There's something else I noticed at this TFCon that really it came home for me. People generally don't know exactly everything that we do here. So I am going to create a video soon that like, you know how like YouTubers have like uh, videos pinned to their page where you can see like, like their introduction video or whatever. See, I don't know anything about any of that. Like just recently my buddy Andy who's helped me with a lot of the Force Friday stuff was like, you know, your Facebook isn't, isn't even linked to your YouTube. I was like, they do that? So I, I'm just, I'm behind on on the times on stuff like that I'm a, I'm a I'm an ape you know what I mean I'm not a, a tech guy so I realize a lot of people don't understand what it is that I do in, in terms of all the things that we do here so I'm gonna create a video and then I'm gonna pin it to my page it'll be like an introduction to the channel but it'll also show everything that I do and there's a good chance you may not know everything that we do here so look forward to that and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the big guy we're gonna talk about a few of the other reveals and then we're going to kind of have a bit of house cleaning for the stuff that's going on for the past three weeks the past three weeks I I've been cramming to get everything done for TFCon, both for the show and so that the channel has content for those weeks. Now that I'm back, I can start grounding my feet in again and really digging in and making sure that the, everything is fresh and up to date and all that kind of stuff. So thank you guys for bearing with me. You feeling good? I'm feeling good. I wish I had horns. I'm going to start getting the horns around here. Just to, when, I'm, when I feel like I made a good point or I got my shit off, I'm going to be like, maybe put it on the microphone. Let's start with this panel. There was a lot of stuff that most of us don't care about, but I do want to mention a couple cool things. For one, the HTB toys. They teased their kind of G.I. Joe Transformer crossover. They've teased a sound wave that turns into a hiss tank, and now they've teased tapes. So I'm guessing that a blaster is coming as well, and the tapes look pretty cool. I'm interested to see what they do with this line. I wish these didn't turn into tapes though. Like just stick with the G.I. Joe motif. Maybe if they turned into like weapons crates or something like that, that would have been, you know, a bit more of a play on the theme that they seem to have going, you know, but go all in, commit, because I think it's a cool idea. I think a lot of Transformer fans are also simultaneously G.I. Joe fans and vice versa. It's kind of two franchises that have crossed over a lot. So combine it, just go in, go all the way in. But these are legend scale and they don't seem to be related to the His Tank stuff at all. It's just confusing from the outside looking in. Now, I have heard from HTP Toys. They have contacted me personally. I hope that they get back in contact with me. It would even be nice to do an interview with them. So shout out to HTP. Let me know if you guys want to talk, get to the bottom of some of this stuff, because there's some there's some mix matching going on here that I, uh, I'm i not sure is as interesting as the G.I. Joe crossover stuff, which seems a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure how successful. That's up to the kind of fan base and stuff, but it, it's, I think, at least different and unique. So some curious stuff going on there. We got more look at their Predacons from, that are coming from Kang Toys, which is supposed some sort of spinoff from Toy World that to me looks a lot more like TFC than it does either. Uh, I saw these in person. They don't look any better to me in person than they do on the internet, but I would like to see what they look like combined and, and see the quality of such before making a decision. They're huge. I will say that. I just want to talk about Iron Factory's Ultra Magnus for a minute. I saw that thing in person, like the prototype. It is amazing. And they have really changed the way that they approach scale recently, where they used to kind of make everything the same scale regardless of the character and now like they're making bigger figures bigger and smaller figures smaller within the legend scale I think it's a really smart move and I'm very curious to see where they go with it more images of MMC's DJD I'd love to finish that set it's kind of up to them whenever that happens two more RC repaints some more repaints their Bruticus an upgrade set for their Bruticus Kind of interesting to see an upgrade set hit before the toy hits. That's curious. I'm anxious to get my hands on their blast off though. And now let's talk about it. Who you ask? Fans toys. Not this time. This time they gotta get one. Fans toys. 
Let's talk about it. The Warpath. I saw it in person. It looks amazing. Rest assured on the colors. They look perfect. The proportions, once again, look perfect. It is an absolutely beautiful representation of Warpath. I think if you like the cartoon likeness, you will like it. If you like the mature aesthetic based on the cartoon, you will like it. It's one of their most impressive takes, in my opinion, that we've seen in a long time. In terms of sculpt. Purely sculpt. Brawn. Once again, look good in person. However, this one, for me, leans a little bit more to the kind of strictly tuned look, which doesn't do a whole lot for me. But the one thing they do is nail the more mature proportions. They've kind of consistently stuck to that. So seeing it in person, it does look good. Uh, a buddy of mine was saying that he's not crazy about the gray color on the arms. I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't have even noticed had he not said anything. Just one of them things. Got to look at their Wild Rider. Looks par for the course. Their next aerial bot. Colored images of their Astro Train. Looks amazing. Chest options look amazing. Proportions look great. Sculpt looks great. It's a little clean in terms of line work for my taste, but I think there's enough interesting things going on that break it up enough for me. Super articulated in terms of that size figure with that type of engineering. Train mode looks good at all. It's sharp. Good looking unit. And that's it, right? No. There was one more. The shot hurting around the world, the show stealer for this year, without a doubt, their Fort Max. Once again, the proportions look amazing. And look, Hasbro, ankle rockers. The amount of sculpt work. Here's where you could get big bang for your buck, right? So the more line work you have in something, in my opinion, the bigger it seems. Doesn't matter if the literal size is small or big, the more detailed something is, the larger it appears. And look at all that line work in the chest. Look at all that line work in the inner legs, the outer legs, the front of the legs. Like this thing is sculpted to the nines. Beautiful. This is definitely going to be released in pieces, with the first piece being the head, I think. The head sculpt looks amazing, by the way. And I hear that the sword is going to be used as the connector piece to fit onto the body, which is cool. I'm curious to see the scale of the head in terms of how big Cerebros is compared to the rest of the headmasters. I would love to see that. Also, if you look at him, his headmaster forms up as well. So all of that stuff works beautifully. Scaling-wise, you see it next to Hoodlum. So you got to start thinking about logistics here if you're interested in this. This is going to take up a lot of real estate. I think they're saying it's going to come in at around 42 inches, something like that. That's no joke. And if this is successful, you'll get Trypticon, you'll get Metroplex, you'll get Scorponok. So you got to think about space for all. This is no joke. This is real estate. This is quarter scale life here. This is Maja Case territory. And please, please, please don't put this thing in a detail. Please, please. Like, look, please, pretty please, don't put this in a detolf. It doesn't belong in one. It's too big, okay? The base mode looks cool. Actually, I feel like it really does look like a city, interestingly enough. Probably do wonders for a Legends collection as well. I also wonder how this will scale with your Legends collection. This is the smart move on Fans Toys Park, where this thing is going to work beautifully with your Masterpiece stuff. Obviously, it's not proper scale. It never will be. But it'll also work beautifully with your Chug stuff, and it'll also work beautifully with your Legends stuff. This is going to be a smart move across the board. Which brings us to the next question. Is it actually going to happen? I don't know. I would say you're definitely going to get the head. If the head comes out and the head is successful, so to speak, then I would imagine you'll get the body. I would imagine this thing is going to at least be split up into three parts, maybe more. And I would imagine at the end of the day, it's going to be somewhere around $800 to $1,000 for all of it. But the good news is, if you don't have the space and you're not committed to this size of bot, you can just get Cerebros and have that represented on your Target Master shelf, which is smart. Another their smart choice. Look, I think if this comes out, we got to sit down and seriously have a discussion as to Fans Toys' place in Transformers history and their place in the hierarchy of Transformer producers ever. I think that conversation needs to happen. This is huge, both literally and figuratively. This is a big deal. I'm in for all of it. I'm in for whatever this company does. If I quit buying Transformers altogether, I will be a fans toys collector until they stop making them. Or if, if unless there's something they they plummet. I've also heard rumors that they're trying to acquire their own factory. Look what they're doing with someone else's factory. Almost releasing a figure a month, at least every other month on average. If they get their own factory, like come on. Like the game could change significantly. God bless them. So 
let's get into some house cleaning stuff that's been taking place over the last few weeks. One of the things I want to talk about is the Fans Toys Jabber. Not my favorite, so let's stay balanced, right? Not my favorite Fans Toys release. I don't think it's as successful as a lot of their recent releases in terms of the robot aspect of it. It looks great, and we're still going to be doing our verses with Unique Toys. I'm going to try to get that done for this week, but there's some action figure problems that that bot has that most of their toys do not. Now, let's settle this blue thing once and for all. All right, so I'm doing a screen recording. I'm opening it up in Photoshop, a picture, and we'll test all the blues. So I got my dripper tool out, and let's see where we're at, somewhere in the middle on the blue spectrum, further down from the purple, closer towards the white on the blue spectrum, gradient-wise. Let's look at a medium color again. Once again, blue spectrum, little lower towards the darker end. Let's look at it in the middle, same thing, same spot. We'll look at it in the higher end, same spot. We'll look at it in the super darker end on his thigh there. And lo and behold, same spectrum, darker color. And now we'll look at the brightest point, blue. Blue, da dee dee da dee da da dee dee This past week of Four Dummies about purchasing and procurement, about pre-ordering versus hunting in the stores versus, you know, buying online, whatever the case may be. I dropped the F-bomb in it. I'm sorry. I, I, usually I go through and I take painstaking efforts to make sure I edit everything out properly, and these past three weeks have been crazy and something slipped through the cracks. So my apologies, uh, sincere apologies, because that's not what I try to do here. And it's on, uh, you know, Patreon, uncut, the Four Dummies episodes are uncut there and that's for an adult audience right but i don't know who's watching this so that's on me my apologies still a good conversation though shout out to laura for getting in her bag recently right she's been swinging the legends scaling discussion a lot of people have been contacting me recently about starting a legend scale collection and how it seems confusing because of the size because of the companies because of all of the different aesthetic choices that are taking place so i get all of this information and then i'm like well look i could do something that could be a benefit with the resources that i have now i don't have any of these figures really i got this tarn that was gifted to me but i don't really i'm not into this you know like it's not my bag it, it would be if i had more space i would do more of the square diorama tables but i don't so at the same time i also know that I have resources where a lot of people I know have these collections and I have access to them and I could do something that would be beneficial. So that's why I did that video for all those people that were thinking about starting down a legend scale collection, for all those people that were, were had questions regarding the differences between the companies, etc, etc. There were some comments in that that were like discouraging, that were, you know, like, who cares? And it's like, well, who cares about any of this, right? I mean, whoever cares is who cares, right? I mean, right? Is that the answer to that? I mean, none of, none of this matters, right? None of this. So who really cares? But it does matter to someone personally, so that's who who cares. A lot of people saying that the G1 Sumbo chart is meaningless. Well, I say at the very beginning of the video that if you think it's meaningless, then that's fine, but it, it's the only thing that we have as like a baseline, so we're just using it for the sake of using it. Because we have nothing else that's consistent. There was people that were saying like, well, I would never mix IDW stuff from Iron Factory with, like, no, me neither, dude. I, I say that too in the video specifically that like this is an IDW thing. I was just saying that they also happen to be about the same size, you know. There were also a lot of people that were like, look, man, this is very helpful. I'm just getting ready to start down. It actually makes a lot more sense. I was confused. So that's that's why I did that one. I hope it was beneficial. The Bradford Exchange one with Crack Studio. Studios. They contacted me. If you look on the internet right now, they obviously contacted a lot of people. They tried to give me product for free that I would review for you in an exchange for promotion for them, right? Like that's how that works. If you look around the internet right now, there's a lot of people that took the free product and that's fine. That's what they were trying to do. That's business. I'm not judging that. That's cool with the gang. I, I, there's nothing wrong with that. Instead of me taking the product for free, which I could use a Green Lantern nightlight or whatever it is. Like, you know, I could use that. I like Green Lantern. I chose to have a conversation conversation with them about something that hopefully would be more beneficial to you and to me rather than just to me. <laughs> but I know it's, it's, it's very nuts and bolts and it's very in depth and kind of you know, inside baseball, so it wasn't for everybody, but that's why I did that one. I did that one instead of taking the free gift, I did it to say, look, let's have a conversation that would be beneficial to folks, and hopefully it was. Hopefully that, that wraps that one up. The Bayverse movies, that, that one just came and went, and hopefully we'll get this Bumblebee one done before the end of the year, and then we'll do kind of an overview of that at some point as well. And lastly, Bob Iger, George Lucas conversation for Force Friday. Shout out to everyone that was like one of the best discussions on the subject I've ever heard, like objective, 
and fair and I appreciate it. I got more feedback on that video saying this might be the best thing you've ever done than ever before and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that because I put a lot of work into that stuff. So I think that'll do it. Today was just more about catching up so we can hit the ground running and get back into it starting next week. We'll do the blur uh, comparisons unless something big pops up of course and uh, we'll just get back on the train. I'm back on the train. I'm back in it. I'm back in it boys. So let's uh, let's have some good discussions. Let's have some decent product to look at. Let's, let's do it. But I just wanted to kind of wrap up the stuff I haven't been able to kind of talk about for the past couple weeks. Talk about this Fort Max situation and tell you a little bit about what I have planned. So I hope that helps. Something light. We're getting back into the trenches next week. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.